Hey everybody, we're back for part two of the CNC build. Today we're going to be putting together the column, the Z-axis of the machine. So let's get right to it. <laughs> Okay, next up we're going to need the Z-stepper mount, the Z-idler, and the Z-end-stop mount. So we need to drill out the holes on all these parts too to make sure everything fits good. So we're going to drill out these four holes with our number six drill. Okay. And we're also going to drill out the four side holes. Alright, now on this Z stepper mount we're going to pre-drill these four holes to be tapped to an M5. So we're going to pre-drill them with the number 19 drill. This is where the stepper motor will mount to. Okay, and while we're at it, we will go ahead and tap these same four holes to M5. Okay, that part is ready. Next up, we will take our Z stepper mount, which is the taller one. The X one is very similar, but just a little shorter. So the Z stepper mount and pre-drill out these eight holes with our number six bit. Okay, good to go. Last, we'll take our Z end stop and pre-drill it as well. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to take all the parts that we've tapped and make sure that the threaded pieces are all up at the top side. And we're gonna put the two shorter ones in the middle here. So the two short ones are these middle ones and then the four long ones on the sides and we're gonna pick a front so I'm gonna say this is my front side so my Z idler plate will go right here my Z end stop plate will go right here so I'm gonna need some nuts and bolts to make that happen so we're going to need eight M5 by 8 button heads for the idler we actually want M5 by 10s for the end stop plate along with nuts for each one so we will need 10 nuts so we're going to go ahead and preload the T nuts onto these bolts it makes things much easier so we'll slide that in and we'll just kind of tighten it down so it's not flopping around and we are going to go ahead and 5x8 button heads and preload those into the Z idler plate. The bump on the T nut that goes toward the T slot, not in towards your part, it goes out towards the T slot. So now we'll go ahead and load the idler plate. Sorry, it goes this way. Now that those are on, now we can finally move on to this main top plate. Alright, so we're using M5 by 16 socket heads. Alright, make sure we're all lined up here. We'll cinch them down. Alright, I think I'm just going to switch to 12 millimeter ones for those two. All right, 12 millimeter ones seem to fit in there, just barely. All right, so we were able to convince M5 by 12s into those, and the rest are M5 by 16s. I had to loosen this plate up a little to convince those to go in. Okay, now we're going to roll this over. All right, next up we're going to take two of our linear rails. And we'll give them a quick wipe down. So 
I've already carefully put two rail cars on each one back to back so the silver pieces are on the outside. And then we're going to need our M4 by 14 bolts and M14 nuts. A whole bunch of them. So we'll go ahead and preload one into each hole on the rail. So there's going to be nine on each rail, so you'll need 18 bolts and nuts. Okay, two nuts all along there. I'm going to load that on to this front surface. And we'll slide it all the way to the top edge of the T-slot here. Now we will rinse and repeat for the other one. And cinch a couple down. Now we're going to need 14 T-slot brackets and two M5 by 10s and T-nuts for each one, so 28 of those. And then we're going to need four M5 by 30 flatheads and four M5 by 20 flatheads for the Z stepper bracket. So we're going to go ahead and get the Z stepper bracket mounted. So make sure that it is rotated offset to the left so it matches the left offset of your idler. So we are going to need M5 by 30s, four of them, and T nuts. Slot. Preload those. Then we'll go ahead and slide that in. Also, going to need our M5 by 20 flatheads. We'll load those on the inside. nuts on each one of those as well. We'll go ahead and just move this up out of the way and tighten one down so it's not sliding around. Now we will move on to the T-slot brackets. So we're going to go ahead and just preload each and every one of these to get it out of the way because they have to be done. So these are the M5 by 10s and a T-nut in each one. And the brackets have two holes on the one side and one hole on the other side. So we're just going to go to the top hole on this side. Okay, I've lied. So on eight of these, we actually need the bolt in the lower hole. So eight of them like this, bolt in the lower hole and just the normal hole. And then the other six with the bolt in the upper hole. So this first. The one on the other side. Then we'll put this back in. So now we're going to flip it very carefully. Put one here, one here. All right, so we're going to put two of these on either side here, making sure that we've got the this side with the inside bolt down, otherwise, it won't fit. Had to switch to the ball and allen key to be able to tighten these down. Inside this hole here, straight to here. And one more. Okay, we're going to flip it over and do the same thing. These four more and these two. It's going to be easier to just leave it on its side actually. Okay, now we're going to take our back end cap rail, 40 by 60 by 505, and 
we're going to slide it in every single one of these at the same time. So, it'll be a little tricky. We're going to have to get these all lined up and leave all of them loose now. Alrighty, so we're just going to slide this in. Make sure that these pieces are down and these ones are spread out for the top and the bottom, like so. One side down. Yes! Finally! So now we can finally do the bottom plate. So we're going to need eight M5x12s with T-nuts. And then the rest will be M5x16s. So we're looking at 16 of those. So we'll go ahead and preload all the M5x12s to start. Now we'll slide it on. And we'll put in our M5x16s. Okay, and we'll go ahead and tighten this up. We'll skip the middle two rows that are holding this one for now. All right. Now, all we need to do is measure this out to be centered in this piece. All right, so we should end up with 192.75 on either side to be lined up in the center. So I'll gingerly tighten these to make sure it doesn't move. Okay, now that the bottom's tightened up, now we can go ahead and tighten up these T-slot brackets. There we have it. The column all put together. Cool, cool. Doing good.